I was still under recruited, you know, not ranked, but like I felt like that's what made me, you know, pretty much lock in on, all right, basketball is what I want to do. Basketball is, you know, my favorite sport, you know, what I love to do and I want to be at the highest level. Uh, I don't fear nobody, dog. I don't <laughs> care if you you 7'7 seven, seven or whatever. I'm, I'm coming straight at you. I probably had a basketball in John hand, like two, maybe three years old, whenever he was able to hold one. Typical boy. Most of the time he playing with a basketball with a little kid goals and stuff, just shooting around. Since I put a ball in my hand, like, you ready to take it, take the ball out. I'm dribbling the ball through the house. Uh, my dad even had to get a little basketball goal to put on <laughs> the living room door. He'd be like, Dad, you, you feel like working me out? So that's what sparked me, like, all right, let's go. We didn't have much access to gyms where I'm from in summer, so we built a, a concrete court with two goals on each end. Um, this is my court in my backyard, I'm basically where everything um, started at. That court is where I got better each and every day. And it's where it's, you know, kind of started this basketball journey. I never really wanted to coach him. I just wanted to train him. What T did with him was huge. The reps that his dad took him through, doing the right drills not overdoing things, just helping them to understand the game. Because Ja was always willing to put in extra work. Not only would Ja practice with the team, his dad even after practice would work with him. My dad was, you know, a hard trainer. He's going to push you to your limits. Um, he's not going to let you quit. <laughs> you, the workout's not really done until he says it's done. He don't care if you're tired or not. He's going to yell. He's just a tough guy, very competitive. And you know, his motto is every time you step on the court, you, you give your all. I really just fell in love with basketball. My dad taught me to like study the game when I was younger. So when they was playing, I'm just studying, just watching my dad, the heart he had and determination, like just go out and give it his all. I'm big on where I come from and basketball was my first love. I'm always be that small town kid that, who had big dreams. Around my junior year of high school, that's when I felt like I could play at the next level, but obviously the colleges didn't see that. I was worried about his athleticism, you know, because he wasn't dunking. So that's when I got the, the big track to tie in the backyard. So after every drill, I had him jumping on it 25 times. And then after that, the bounce got crazy. <laughs> I guess this killer mindset, uh, it was times when my team probably would have losing and I had to score for us to win. He smoked it! Two hands and jammed it! He was uh, my first hater before I even had him. Um, calling me overrated, um, saying like he wasn't impressed, that type of stuff. And that type of stuff really fueled me to try to become better so I can make him happy. I got added to the camp late. It was like, if I don't call your name, then go to the other gym. My name wasn't called, so I went to the back gym. James Kane from Murray State University was there recruiting another player in the main gym when he got hungry. He was directed down a hallway to a concession stand. Just a few minutes of watching Ja, you just knew he was special. Ended up peeking his head in the gym and was watching for a couple minutes. And, um, I guess that's when he seen me. I called my boss. You got to come up here and see this kid. We immediately got to, to Spartanburg the next day, and you know, I was just blown away uh, by his total game. On September 2nd, 2016, John Morant committed to play D1 college basketball at Murray State. Underneath finds Johnson wide open, blocked by Morant! And after leading Murray State to the NCAA tournament his freshman year, Ja, who had grown to six foot two, was named team captain heading into his sophomore year. Over the summer, I was starting to hear that he's not just a good player, he's really good. He had Alabama early on their schedule. Let's see what he's like when he goes on the road and plays at Bama. In November, Ja put on a show in Tuscaloosa, notching 38 points, nine rebounds, 
five assists. And this. After that game, it was just different. Well, I always had the confidence in myself that I was the best player. But if you had to ask me when no colleges were contacting me, I, I would have probably told you that I don't even think I could have played D1 because right? of no colleges contacting me. So it was times where I questioned myself and doubted myself. Was I good enough? And my parents told me to just keep going, and it all paid off. Didn't get much sleep last night. I felt like I was just too anxious. Just being able to go up there and shake Adam Silver's hand. I was doubted in high school, doubted some in college, and I know it's still going to be some who doubt me in the NBA. With the second pick in the 2019 NBA Draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select Ja Morant from Murray State University. Nothing with Ja surprises me. These are all things that we knew coming in even to his rookie season, you know, Ja was going to flourish. The fact that he's doing it at such a rapid pace is, is so fun to watch. One thing I always say is, you know, the work going to show. I'm under white. I'm in white. Most people now fall in love with the fancy part of the game, thinking they got to do something or thinking they got to have a trainer to get better. But my dad, preached to me that I didn't need any of those things to be a good basketball player. Ja is a student of the game. He's always been a student of the game. And now at the NBA level, you just see him steadily getting better day after day, year after year, because he puts in the work. We got to be able to hear each other. We playing in front of thousands. We got to be able to hear you. I'd never be satisfied coming from being overlooked and underrated. Last one, Trip. Make it a good one, Trip. It's just something that I'm going to just keep using as a chip on my shoulder, just to keep pushing. Hey, together on three. One, two, three. Together. When you take a tumble like that, does it ever make you second guess the way you play? Never, ever. I'm not listening to nobody to try to tell me how I play. I've been playing like this all my life. It got me here and I'm gonna continue to play like that. I'm willing to lay my body on the line for my team. No matter who I'm going up against, I can be a great player, but I mean, I just look at him as that. It's a lot of the right towards the top. Look at this pass to Tillman. Oh, Steps back and nails the three. Attack. Scoring game in franchise history. John Morant, a career high fit transition. Oh, John Morant with a man's jam. It's just a funny story, man. Before I was locked into working out, me and my homies used to be on the game 24-7. And like one day, you know, we actually pulled an all-nighter playing the game. So by the time my pops went to sleep and woke up, we were still playing the game. And he was like, uh, basically just sending the message. At that, at that time, you know, we didn't understand. But he was like, while you playing the game, somebody else playing the game. And then he like, let me know what that means by the time I get back home. When he got back home, we were still locked in and playing the game. So he like, y'all know what that means? We're like, nah. He like, while y'all in here playing video games, somebody actually out there working on their game. And then since he put that message, said that message to us, he had to start begging us to come from outside. Day in and day out working on my game. I can have school, basketball practice. I come home, work out with him. John Morant's name is very much in this MVP conversation. Does it deserve to be? It definitely deserves to be. I think he's probably like number three or four in the actual conversation. I'm not a big, you know, individual goal guy, but you know, that's one, you know, I definitely can say I feel like, you know, that's pretty much everybody's goal, you know, in this league. You still don't <laughs> think folks respect your game? No, nah, I do, but I feel like now, like just because I'm me and I, you know, I speak on whatever I want to and say what I'm feeling at the time, that some people don't like me. 
Mm. So that's why I bust their ass.